Good morning, new creation. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Just want to say thank you to all of you family and friends who decided to tune in to this video. Thank you for taking the time out to watch. I want to just say thank you again to all of those of you who participated in our NCBC cleanup day. Just want to say thank you for your time and your efforts. Um, I want to honor you by showing this quick video of some of the pictures we captured from that cleanup effort and just say thank you and I'll be back with you after the video. Just want to say thank you again to all of you who participated on last week. Uh, just a couple of quick announcements. I uh, want to say a very special happy birthday to our very own Sam Harris. Sam Harris uh, is probably one of the oldest, if not the oldest, member of our church. And just want to say thank you. God bless you, Sam, for your faithfulness. Um, and just thank God that he has allowed you to see another year. And also today... A very special birthday in our household. My son, Andrew, has turned nine. So just want to say happy birthday, Andrew. A uh, couple of big announcements. For the month of December, like we always have done in the past, we will not be having Sunday school or Bible study. So there will be no Sunday school or Bible study for the month of December. However... Starting in December, first Sunday in December, we will be returning to in-person worship. We will be coming back to the sanctuary for everyone who feels comfortable and is um, wanting to be in the sanctuary. We will have in-person service. Be on the lookout for the text message that will go out announcing this and I have a little bit more details about that. But just no Sunday school, no Bible study for the month of December. We're going to give our teachers a break. Allow them to rest, uh, renew, and get back, um, and just be able to just to, to, to relax for a little bit and, and re-refresh as we start the new year. I'm so excited about next year. 
Um, and I'm so excited about the month of December because we'll be able to come back in to the sanctuary and enjoy each other in person and not on a computer screen or phone screen, a little box where we get to see everybody. Um, with that, I just want to uh, pray and let's get started. Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you. Thank you for bringing us this far. Thank you for all that you have done for us. Thank you for being so good to us. Lord, now I pray that you just have your way in this service. Have your way in, with your word. Let your word reign forth. Let your word be um, a convicting power, uh, uh, an encouragement, and also a, um, a, a, a source of strength for those who need it. Lord, we pray that the Holy Spirit will speak through me to these, your people, whoever they may be, whoever they may be, anywhere in the world, Lord, we pray that your word and that the Holy Spirit would move to encourage those who are listening to it. Lord, we pray now that you bless our time. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. New creation, um, I just kind of want to continue our message from last week. Uh, my le last message last week was found in John 15, and I, I feel like I, I cut it short. So I want to continue on and, I, to, and get to the next part of that. It, <laughs> there's an old preacher, um, he's passed away now, A. Lewis Patterson, said he felt like in all his years of preaching, that he never finished the sermon because there was always another verse that wanted him to say something. And I felt like that this, last week, that there was another verse I wanted to get to but didn't want to take up too much time. So I want to continue our message, um, continue the text that we were looking at last week and, and continue on in the idea of abiding in Christ, abiding in Christ. Um, this week I want, to, I want to tag it with abiding in love. Abiding in love. Let's read. And I want to actually start. I'm reading from the New King James, and I want to start with verse 1 um, for our context. And then our text will actually be verses um, 12 through, I'm sorry, let's say 9 through 17. All right, let's begin. I am the true vine, and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. You are already clean because of my word, which I have spoken to you. Abide in me, and I in you, as a branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the vine dresser. I'm sorry, I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me, and I in him, bears much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered. And they gather them and throw them into the fire, and they are burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire, and it shall be done for you. By this, my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, so you will be my disciples. As the Father loved me, I also have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you that my joy may remain in you and that your joy may be full. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that he lay down one's life for his friends. You are my friends if you do whatever I command you. No longer do I call you servants, for a servant does not know what the, his master is doing. But I have called you friends. For all things that I heard from my father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you. And appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should be should remain that whatever you ask the father in my name, he may give you these things. I command you that you love 
one another. So, new creation, we have reached the end of Jesus' earthly life. We, we're, we're at Thursday, Thursday, the night before his crucifixion. We, we've already, if, um, in chapters 13, 14, and 15, they all deal with this night. And, and we see that Jesus has washed the disciples' feet. He has shared the um, Last Supper with them, and he has not been imparting wisdom into them because he knows he's about to leave this earth. And we saw last week that he's now left the upper room and he's, he's walking and, and, and he says that he wants them to abide in him or remain in him so that they may bear more, much fruit because by bearing fruit would indicate that he, they are his disciples. But he continues this idea of abiding and he shifts it. He shifts it to love. Starting with verse 9, it says, As the Father loved me, I also loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, as I have kept my Father's commandments, and abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may remain in you, and that your joy may be full. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Jesus says, I loved you. The Father and I share a special relationship and we love each other. And just as we love each other, we also love you unconditionally. And, and because of that unconditional love, he says, this is my commandment. This is how you show love is, is if you keep my commandments. And what is that commandment? He gets to it in verse 12. He says, this is my commandment. He answers that question. He says, this is my commandment that you love one another. As I have loved you. See, love is, is, the, is the relationship that unites the disciples to Christ. It, it's the relationship that, that, that is evident or should be evident in our lives that shows that we're disciples of Christ. And, and how do we show that love? We show that love by how we love everyone else. How we love one another. Not because... Not because we're such a good person, not because of how good we are or how loving we are, because God has loved us. Jesus loved us. He says, as I love you, love one another. That word love is agape, is unconditional. But then he also says, this is uh, greater love has no one than this, that he lay down his, one's life for his friends. Greater love has no one than this, that he lay down one's life for his friends. I, 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 I want you to see something here in New Creation. Because look at the next verse. He says, you are my friends if you do whatever I command you. How would it be if somebody came up to you and said, and I, I, I'm borrowing this from John MacArthur. He asks this question. He says, what would it be like if someone came up to you and said, will you be my friend? And, and, and in order to be my friend, you have to do whatever I tell you to do. <laughs> that doesn't sound like much of a friendship, does it, new creation? That, that doesn't sound like much of a of, 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 um friendship as we define it we it doesn't it sounds like one, more of a one way thing it, it sounds more like a dictatorship and so when we see it says you are my friends if you do whatever i ask the great god of this universe jesus god in the flesh has asked the disciples to be his friends by doing what he commands them and his commandment is this, that, he, that we love one another with a sacrificial love. You know, this, this, this idea of love isn't very popular today. This idea of love isn't, isn't very popular at all. We, we've become so polarized that we politicize everything. If you're not in my camp, then I can't love you. That was one of the disappointing things. I, I, I debated if I was going to even talk about Kyle Rittenhouse. And whether or not you believe he's guilty or he was justified in, in, 
in defending himself or if you felt like he is a murderer. It doesn't matter. What, 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 what got me is the reaction of Christians who applauded the fact that he got off. He, he got off. And, 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 and not so much that he got off, but that he, he was able to defend himself and that somebody, but, but at, the, at the heart of it, somebody died. Two people died. And, and what, what gets me is that how are we showing love to this world if we feel like people who don't agree with us are not image bearers, are not worthy of our love? And, and it can't be just any kind of love. It has to be a love... It, that Jesus is saying here that, that we show that we're his disciples by how we love one another. Are, are we showing love to those who don't agree with us? Are we showing love to those who, who, who don't look like us? Are we showing love to those who, who, who don't um, like us? In Matthew it says love our enemies. That's hard. That's impossible if you ask me. It's impossible in my flesh to do that. But, but God, it says, to love our, love one another. Because he has loved us. Greater love is this than we lay down our lives for our friends. Now, I want you to understand this, that, that Jesus is showing more so this idea of friendship as a relationship. Because he also says that we should... <coughs> Um, love. He says, you are my friends if you do so whatever I command you. Jesus is foreshadowing the next day where he's going to lay down his life for the disciples. But not only the disciples, but everyone in this world, both past, present, future. It, he lays down his life because he loved us. Love, love, love is a decision, new creation. You know, we have romanticized love that, that it has to be because of our affection for someone or because of our feelings for someone. But no, love is a decision. We choose to love. I know I'm right about it because, because there's times where your loved ones become hard to love. You're mad at them. You, you, you're angry with them and, and, and you don't really feel like loving them, but love is a decision that we make. I, I know this week is, is Thanksgiving week. We, a lot of us will spend time with our families, and, and there's, there's, in, in every family, there's someone that's hard to love. I, I, I know I may be the only one, uh, but, 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 but I, I, I bet there's somebody out here that will agree with me that there's some people in your family that's just hard to love. But we make the decision to love them. Jesus says greater love than this, that we lay down our life for our friends. That word friends means, it, it's in the Greek, it's phileos. Um, and at the root is phileo, which is the word for brotherly love. Greater love is this, that we lay down our lives for our loved ones, for our, those who we love. But see, Jesus is, is, is saying something very, very, very unique here. Because it's not just our friends. Look what he says in verse 13. He says, no longer do I call you servants, for a servant does not know what his master is doing, but I called you Friends, for all things that I heard from my father, I made known to you. In verse 15, he, he, he says something that would have blew the disciples' mind. He says, no longer do I call you servants. That word servants is doulos. It, it actually is better translated slaves. Do you know that we, when we come to Christ, 
we are considered Christ's slaves. That, that idea of slavery in, in, the Old Te in the New Testament wasn't an uncommon thing. In, in the Roman world, there were, there were millions and millions of slaves. Slaves practically did all of the work. And, and this idea of slavery in the Bible is, is not unique. It's not unheard of. The idea of slavery is what God is using to illustrate a spiritual institution that, that we are slaves to Christ and Christ is our Lord and our master. Those words, those ideas of being our Lord and master comes from the idea that Christ is Lord and master and that we are his slaves. In order to have a master, you have to be a slave. But, but he says, I'm not just calling you slaves anymore. I'm, a, I'm, I'm taking it a step further. You're not just a slave. You're also my friend. New creation. Have you ever thought what it is to be a friend to God? We are a friend of God because we abide in him and he abides in us. I don't want us to miss this. I don't want us to miss the idea that Jesus is, is calling out to us. He, he wants to have a relationship, a fellowship with us. See, once we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, it just is the beginning of the journey, but it, the journey doesn't end there. We, once we become part of the family of God, doesn't mean that we, we just want to keep our relationship with him or our fellowship with him at ground zero. We want to abide in him and, and get to know him. And he said, if you love one another, you be my friend. You follow my commandments and I consider you, I call you friend. Because greater love is this, than you lay down your life for your friends. I believe in 1 John, John is reflecting on this, this actual idea of laying down your life for your friend. In 1 John 3, 16, 1 John 3, 16, it says, this is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us, and we are to lay down our lives for our brothers. Hmm. Those people who are hard to love, we are to love them, but not love them in any kind of way. Love them in a way that we were ready to lay down our life for them. Lay down our life. Are we willing to take that step and go that far? That's what God is calling us to, but it is not that we can do it by ourselves. He says he already said it earlier that, that, that apart from me, we can do nothing. We have to be abiding in him and remaining in him. And his words have to abide in us. His, his, his spirit has to abide in us. That we, we move out the way and allow the Holy Spirit to live through us. It says, I am crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives through me. That's the way we love like this kind of love, that we love in a self-sacrificing way, that we can abide in him and he abide in us, that, that we can have this joy that will be complete, full, that, that, that nothing, our external circumstances won't have, won't a, uh, affect us at all. We will, we will live a joyful life. Get, look, look what it says. I mean, think about it like this. If, if we don't have love, then how are we going to, how, how are we going to be obedient? Because he's, he, his commandment is that we love. So if we don't love other people, we hate the, the other side. And we hate those who don't agree with us. We, 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 we can't get along with anybody. How are we going to love them? How are we going to abide? How are we going to show fruit? Have you noticed that some of the meanest people are some of the most miserable? <coughs> Those who don't love are some of the most miserable people in our churches, not, not out in the world, in our churches. We all have grown up in a church where, or, or been around people who say they're Christian, but some of the meanest people having some of the most miserable lives because they don't have joy. Because they're not following the commandment of him who has called us. But look what it says. It says, you did not choose me, but I chose you 
and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should remain and that whatever you ask in the Father in my name, he may give you. See, look, new creation. We didn't choose God. God chose us. Somebody needs to be reminded of that, that he loved us and he chose us. He chose you. He chose us. God, the great, I, 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 don't, I don't know how many times I can say it this way, but the great God of this universe, the one who is omniscient, the one who is all-powerful, who is all-knowing, the one who is uh, everywhere, we, we, that, that God, that infinite God chose us. And he chose us. For a purpose. See, back in the day when disciples, when when um, a a Jew, a Jewish male, a teenager or young man would would decide to 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 move on in his education, at the end of it, he would choose a a a bishop or he would choose somebody to to follow. He would choose a rabbi to follow. He he would. Spend the time with them and, 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 and live with them and, and, and sit at his feet and learn as much as he could from the rabbi. Jesus came to this earth and he flipped it. His disciples didn't choose him. He chose the disciples. In the same way he chose the disciples, he chose us. And so we see right here, it says, you did not choose me, but I chose you. And not only did I choose you, I appointed you that you should go and bear fruit. God's plan was that he would use the disciples to turn this world upside down. And, and the, the mere fact that we are standing here today is because the disciples were appointed to bear fruit. Because of their witness, the world was changed because of what they did God was able to use them to transform this world. So, so when we see this, he appointed them that they should go bear fruit and that their fruit should remain. The evidence that they, if their fruit remain is me and you. But not only that, he says, and whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give you. See, this is not only a promise to the disciples, it's also a promise to us. That if we are obedient to him, we follow his commandments, we abide in him. That whatever we ask the Father in his name, he may give you. I, I addressed this last week and I'll talk about it again. You know, when we pray, it won't be a selfish prayer if his words are abiding in us. If we're abiding in him, it won't be selfishness. It would be about his word, his kingdom, his, his agenda. Because we want to bear much fruit. These things I command you that you love one another. New creation. The idea that we love one another is shown that in this. That I love the old song. That it says they hung him high. They stretched him wide. He bowed his head. For me he died. And the next line says that's love. The idea that he loved us enough to stand and die on the cross for us. That's love. If you are watching this video and you have not placed your love in him, I mean, you place your faith in him, know that he loves you. He's chosen you. It's not a coincidence that you clicked on this video. It's not a coincidence that you got into this part. It's not a coincidence that you are being pricked in your heart right now. That's Love, new creation. That's love for, for any of you that have not embraced the idea that he has loved you. He's loved us unconditionally that he would go so far as to dying on the cross for us. But I like how the song keeps going. It says, but that's not how the story ends. Because three days later, he rose again. That's love. Not only did he die on the cross for our sins, he was buried and he rose again to pay the price for our sins and to present himself before God, 
a perfect sacrifice. He loved us and he loved us unconditionally. That, 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 that he would revolutionize this idea that we're not only slaves, but we're friends. We, we, we not only are slaves to him, but we're also his friends. This idea is revolutionary because the idea that we're slaves, slaves in the Roman culture in that time was common. They, they did all the work. But those slaves, some, some were able to elevate, but not all. Some were able to, to, to become in a place of uh, recognition and, 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 and become close to their masters, but, but not all. God is saying, Jesus is saying here, I, I'm not only calling you slave, but I'm also calling you friend. Ah, love that song. It says, I am a friend of God. Because of this, because I, I can, can we say that? Can we say that with confidence that we can say that I am a friend of God because I am trying to abide in his love and keep his commandment by loving one another. This week, as we celebrate Thanksgiving, I want you to thank God for loving us. But I not only want you to thank God for loving us, I want you to show that you love one another. I want, I want you to abide in him so that his love will abide in you and that you can show it to those who are unlovable and that are hard to love. And remember that he died on the cross. He chose us. He appointed us to bear fruit. So let us go forth and bear much fruit. God bless you, new creation. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you. We thank you for this, your word. Thank you for the reminder that you loved us. You loved us so much that you bore our sins on the cross. But not only did you bear our sins and die on the cross, you also rose from the dead that you're seated on the right hand of the Father, making intercession, pleading to God on our behalf. So, Lord, we thank you for all that you do. Continue to be with us, new crea um, dear Heavenly Father. Continue to watch over us and keep us. For those who may be traveling this week or have already traveled, Lord, we pray that you give them traveling grace and traveling mercies, that they may return. And, Lord, we pray for us as a body. Thank you. Have you continue to sustain and bless us. Lord, we thank you that you have gotten us this far. Lord, we look forward to the day where we can come back into the sanctuary the, in December that we'll come back and fellowship in person with each other. We thank you for how you sustained us to get to this point. And we'll be sure to give you all the honor, glory, and praise. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. God bless you. God keep you.